Hello once again and welcome back to the tournament of the old world. We're in the Grand Cafe one and only round here. It's a one and done and we're here with Jeff the ref in a rather, I, I, I will say Jeff, you're looking good in that blue and white. Very fancy. And he tells me that it's a go-go. And what a go-go we've got. It's the two siblings of the Dragon Emperor here fighting out Zhao Ming versus Miao Ying. Both of them of the Celestial Dragon variety. Now, Miao Ying is bringing a rather ranged heavy fo uh, fo focused force in this one. We'll get out in the end. Uh, she has her front line of two simple Jade Warriors, uh, who, you know, they look quite snazzy. Rather interesting sort of designs there, quite like them. This is obviously an original army that was created just for Warhammer 3, based on the uh, Grand Cathayan uh, faction that was uh, has already been written about, but never really had an army produced by a Games Workshop. Her range force, which, as I said, is the main focus, has a Celestial Dragon Crossbowmen, who are currently being buffed, that's why they've got the weird effect on them at the moment. Some Iron Hail Gunners, basically they, they're a type of like hand cannon type unit. We've got Miao Ying herself down here. And we've also got the Wuxing War Compass, which is a, kind of like a, a buffing kind of chariot unit. It's good for uh, supporting different uh, infantry on the line. We've also got some Jade Warrior Crossbow and another Iron Hail Gunners. Standing across from Miao Ying is her brother Zhao Ming, the Iron Dragon. Uh, now, they are bringing a little bit more of a melee focus force. Three units of Jade Warriors comprise his front line, but he's also backed up by a unit of Celestial Dragon Crossbowmen, a Iron Hail Gunner, and another Jade Warrior Crossbowman with shields. He has brought his own artillery, though, in the form of the Fire Rain Rocket, a rather impressive looking unit, as we can see there. Uh, basically, uh, ignore the, the fact that the missiles jitter inside the launcher, we're not quite sure why it does that. And I believe at the moment someone is about to get a spell cast toward them. But uh, we will kick this one off as both armies now rapidly move to engage. Spell cast there. Lightning bolts actually struck Xiao Ming. An impressive start, he got knocked over there for a second. We can also see what looks like some kind of decoration of a, some kind of orc axe there on the ground. As the two armies now sidle up to one another. Looks like she's casting another spell. Is it going to be effective? Oh, he's casting a spell as well, I believe. She missed with that, but oh, there's a wall of flame heading through. And those Iron Hail Gunners, they're just going to tank it. Running straight through. Absolutely brutal as the exchange of fire begins. Two very ranged heavy forces, really. Infantry about to join the line. Celestial dragon heads there, burning away things. We've got another spell being cast. There's lots of magic very early on. There's magic all over the place. Massive lightning bolt. Kills quite a few celestial dragon crossbowmen. And the two siblings are using their abilities to t take on their dragon forms. Now, uh, remember, the white dragon is Xiao Ming. The black dragon is Miao Ying. It's brother and sister now duke it out in the sky. But the kind of large targets and they are getting absolutely rinsed by fire from both of their from both armies uh, I don't know how long that fight will last for another spell cast but it looks like it was a bit of a miscast didn't even get anywhere near but you can see the fire rockets raining in over here just splatting the ground iron hail gunners taking hits the front line oh and a brutal hit that was that was a bit of a self-sacrificial shot there two of the uh, units there of, uh, of uh, Xiao Ming just got absolutely squashed by that, but a lot of infantry died there on both sides. I'm not sure who cast that, but it, I don't know if it was really a tactically sound decision. The Wuxing War Compass just kind of rolling around doing its own thing back there. We've got the front line still duking it out down here as the, uh, as the Jade Warriors just taking turns stabbing each other with Dao swords. It's brutal and it's nasty, and I forgot I had the Blood Effects DLC on. <laughs> as, uh, as the two dragons once again square up, this is quite an impressive sight visually here as the two absolutely start tearing into each other. Again, though, <laughs> Zhao Ming, he, he gets the worst of it. He gets hit there. Oh, massive spell going off in the background here. It's just bodies being churned up by gigantic dragon claws. This can't be good for either force. I wouldn't be surprised if both of them decide to back off after that horrific experience. We do have a unit fleeing though from uh, from uh, Miao Ying's force, although Miao Ying is the one who isn't fleeing in dragon form, she's actually chasing down a celestial dragon crossbowman. 
As the remainder of the infantry continue to struggle on, it looks like one of his, uh, one of the Xiao Ming's Jade Warriors are coming back. The Wuxing War Compass taking artillery fire here doesn't seem to be affecting it too much as it just kind of rolls around doing its thing. I'm not actually sure what that's doing. It's very glowy, and the guy on it is resplendent in his gold battle short. As we uh, continue this fight, we've got. Uh, oh, uh, this that's a significant development. It looks like, yes, Xiao Ming has shattered. That means he is not going to return to the field. How much longer can his forces really hold on? Yep, they're all routing, and that's it. Jeff's called it. The, 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 that is, that is going to be it. That is going to be the end of the battle. There we go. Counted as a Pyrrhic victory for some reason. Although, uh, to be honest, I, I would have said it was quite, uh, quite an even fight. It was short, it was sharp, and it was nasty. Let's have a look at the statistics here. Who did what, where, when, and why? So, looking at Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon, she brought 592 uh, troops to the battle, lost 259 with 333 remaining. Zhao Ming, the Iron Dragon, brought 665, lost 294 with 371 remaining. Now, Miao Ying, who both of them, to be fair, just about survived the fight, she killed 33 enemies. Her uh, two infantry got 22 and 17, respectively. Uh, Iron Hail Gunners, uh, one of them only did 10, but the other one did a fantastic 77 casualties. Uh, other than that, the Jade Warrior Crossman, another respectable 50. And the Wuxing War Compass was apparently getting kills. I don't know whether it was just sponging kills off another one. I, I didn't actually see it doing much, but it got 57. Across the, uh, the board, though, Xiao Ming only killed two enemies with all the spells he was casting. And his infantry really struggled. Two of his Jade Warriors combined only did 13. Oh, another unit did 27. Three kills from his own Iron Hail Gunners. But really, his standout units were the Fire Rain Rocket and the Jade Warrior Crossman, with shields both getting 75 and 78 respectively, while the Celestial Dragon Crossman only killed five. But it's understandable given the fact that they got hit by some pretty nasty spells very early on in the fight, and it's not surprising. I'm not, being, I'm not sure why I'm being told about the Skaven spells of Plague, but... That's just there. So, tactically, it seemed like quite a sound decision for both armies to just get straight up into the fight. Xiao Ming certainly had the advantage in the early stages of, in, in terms of numbers, in terms of infantry that could have engaged and allowed him to sit at the back and cast spells, but both of them immediately went into their Celestial Dragon form, and it was really going uh, down to which of the two was going to get the advantage there. And honestly, it was Miao Ying's range forces that really won the day on that one. The fact that they were just able just just to do enough extra damage to his hit points to cause him to break before she did, but it was really a knife edge fight, and quite an interesting one, considering how short, sharp, and brutal that was. And that means that Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon, goes through and will represent Grand Cathay in the Grand Tournament of the Old World. Thank you everyone for joining in today. I hope you have a good week, and I'll catch you for the next one. Bye bye.